Hey again, it's me. I'm trying something new here. I just don't have time to make a polished edited video, so I'm trying something a bit more off the cuff. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions when this is all done. Um, yeah, so as I did with the first essay, I want to point out a few things about this second essay assignment. Um, yeah, hopefully this will clarify what I'm looking for. Uh, but before I do, I want to remind you of a couple things. I talked about this in the Closer Look video in the first essay, so I'll keep it brief, but I think it's worth repeating. Um, first, if you can print out the assignment, I recommend you do. Uh, it's a good idea to highlight important things. Uh, have it handy as you write. Uh, if you can't print it out, I recommend you take notes and, and keep these notes handy. Uh, and when you're writing the essay, I recommend you have the assignment open so you can refer to it as you write. Uh, and again, whether you print it out or not, I hope you'll review the assignment often. At the very least, I think it's good to read it every time you sit down to write, at least read the prompt. Uh, and then uh, read the Understanding Essay 2 page, I don't know, every every other time, every third time, something like that. It's really easy to forget details when you're caught up in the writing. Uh, yeah. So let's look at the assignment. Um, I don't want to spend too much time in the due dates section, but there are a few things I want to draw your attention to. Um, so first, let's talk about uh, working drafts. Uh, if you attended the first working draft, I hope uh, you see it's uh, helpful. Um, let me go to the syllabus really quickly. This is a syllabus. This center column here is the stuff for a default B. And if you um, don't do all the stuff that's listed there, the consequences for that to your grade are in this column. And then over here, there are some things that you can do in addition to earn a third of a grade, usually. Um, so let's look here, just noting that um, if you do all three working draft conferences with a reasonably complete draft, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, if you do all three, then that raises the grade by a third. You can still miss one of them. So if you make two working draft conferences, then you are qualified for that default B. I just want to know if you miss the first one, you really want to then make the other two because if you only do one working draft conference, then your grade goes down a third. And if you don't do any of them, your grade actually goes down two thirds of a letter, right? So if you miss one, you're okay. If you get all three, your grade goes up. So try to make sure you do um, at least the following two. Uh, I just wanted to draw your attention to this row two, however. Uh, if you do a working draft conference anyway, then you might as well do the questionnaires. There's one before and one after each of the drafts. Um, the one before helps me read your paper better, answer questions that you have, and so on. The one after helps you process our conversation. You have to attend the working draft conference in order to um, qualify for the raised grade. Um, but yeah, that's an easy way to, to raise the grade, in this case, from B to a B plus. But yeah, I'm just drawing attention to that's what these things are here. The working drafts, the pre-conference questionnaires do the day of the conference, post-questionnaire three days after. And then after you've turned it in, there's this reflection two days after you turn in your final draft. Okay, so I hope that was clear. All right, with that out of the way, let's look at the assignment. I'm not going to read the whole page here, MLA format, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can read on your own, but the prompt is important enough that I'll uh, read it. And then we'll look at stuff from the Understanding the Prompt page. So, uh, in at least 1,500 words, Please write an essay that explores the benefits and drawbacks for students, for schools, and or for American culture more broadly. 
when schools privilege the teaching of standard English. Given these benefits and drawbacks, what is your position on the issue? Please draw meaningfully on ideas from all three of this unit's main assigned readings, Fish, Young, and Lane. Uh, though if relevant, you may also draw on your personal experience as well as your own independent research. Now, I know some of you are probably nervous about that word count. 1,500 words probably sounds like a lot to many of you. Um, and maybe it is, but uh, it might be the longest paper you've written. I get that. But um, I do have a couple ideas on that, but we'll come back to that. For now, uh, I want to look at the Understanding Essay 2 page. So I want to start with this section here uh, about the tension. Uh, in this section, I acknowledge that there is a tension in the assignment between uh, exploring and taking a position. Right? Exploring can be messy, uh, it can be confusing, where taking a position means uh, making a judgment, uh, coming to a conclusion, taking a stand, and, and there's tension there. Often when teachers ask you to take a position, they want a clear, like an ambiguous position. They want a thesis statement that clearly lays out exactly what you want and then supports it step by step with clear related reasoning. I, I'm not one of those teachers, okay? Now, it, it's possible that you'll come to a perfectly clear conclusion. Uh, Stanley Fish does, right? Uh, he acknowledges that there are other positions, but he thinks they're obviously wrong. His position is the right one. So, you know, if you feel the, similarly, then, uh, you know, maybe this isn't as uh, challenging as it might be. Uh, but if you're not Stanley Fish, you may find, as I am, you may find that you're torn about the issue. So I think the best way to think about this is to look at Jasmine Lane's article. So she does take a clear stand. She believes she has to teach standard English in her classes. But she's not perfectly happy about it, right? She's weighed the benefits and drawbacks of teaching or, or not teaching standard English. And she's come to a conclusion that she holds on balance. And that really is the key here, the, the phrase on balance. So let me say it a different way. There are benefits and drawbacks when we privilege standard English. There are benefits and drawbacks when we refuse to privilege standard English. So uh, which benefits and which drawbacks do you think are more important uh, and why? Uh, that's what I'm talking about when I say taking a, for, uh, taking a position forces you to make judgments about these consequences. What on balance is your position? And note that I want to point this out. I really do want you to tell me what you think. I don't want you to guess what you think I want to hear. As I explain in, in this area here, I've been thinking about the issue for some time now, and I still change my mind, sometimes in response to arguments that students have made in their essays. So please, uh, don't try to guess what I want to hear. Don't worry about what I think. Figure out what your position is, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing what that is. All right, another point I wanted to make, I just wanted to emphasize that and or doesn't necessarily mean and. Right. So in the prompt, I ask you to explore the drawbacks and benefits for students, for schools and or for American culture more broadly. Right. And or I want to make sure that, you know, this and or doesn't mean and it really means and or. Right. So that phrase and or means you can choose which combination you find useful for your argument. Uh, you can write about the consequences for students. You can write about the effects on schools. You can write about the effects on American culture. You can write about students and schools. You can write about students and culture. You can write about all three, right? The, the point is you can talk about the effects it has on culture, students, schools, any one or two or three of them. Okay. And when I say American culture, I mean this in a broad sense. So 
Uh, for example, Young says that privileging standard English affects the way employers think about hiring. Um, that's American culture, right? Or Jasmine Lane uh, points out the role that standard English has in the court system. Again, uh, culture can cover a lot of ground. Uh, and when I say students, right, uh, it doesn't need to be students while they're in school. Both Fish and Lane argue that the consequences of teaching standard English follow students into the future long after they've left school. Okay? These would still be considered uh, consequences or effects on students. Okay? Uh, so let me say it another way. The, the, these choices, uh, students, schools, and American culture, these choices are meant to give you the freedom to explore what you see as relevant. They're not meant to limit you. Okay? All right. As I said at the beginning, I would talk about the word count. Um, so let's, let's do that now. The essay asks for 1,500 words. Um, and as I said, that may sound like a lot for many of you. Um, but it's meant to encourage you to dig deeply into the issue. So one meaningful way to meet the word count, I kind of talk about that here. One meaningful way to meet the word count is to spend a good amount of time with the texts that I assigned. All right? The assignment says I want you to draw meaningfully on all three of the texts. Fish, Young, and Lane are the three texts, right? And when I say I want you to, I want you to draw on the sources meaningfully, I mean that I don't want you to just mention the writer's name, maybe throw in a random quote, and then move on, right? Uh, the three articles I assigned offer a range of positions. I talk about that a little bit here, right? They talk about a range of positions about privileging standard English. Fish obviously thinks it's a good thing. Young argues that it's oppressive, discriminatory, right? And Lane uh, tries to find a position that acknowledges uh, both of these uh, extremes, right? So use their work to set up the context to explain like, why the, con the conversation matters, uh, to explore the consequences of privileging standard English or not privileging it, uh, and then to develop your position. Okay. And uh, that might help with the next point, which you'll re hopefully recognize from the previous uh, essay. I want you to write your essay as if someone from outside the class might read it. Okay, People who aren't in the class, they may never have thought much about standard English at all. They, they might not even know what the term means. And even if they do know what it means, they may not have thought about what's at stake, what, what consequences um, we're going to be talking about. So, um, yeah, it, it's certain that they've never heard of Fish, Young, or Lane, right? So when you introduce them and their ideas, it's important that you provide the context. Who are these writers? Uh, what are they writing about? How does their position fit in the general argument? Uh, without that context, a reader from outside the class would be completely lost, right? Uh, and without that context, you'll probably struggle to get 1,500 words, okay? So write as if someone outside the class will read it, okay? All right, so a quick review. Uh, take a position and explain why, on balance, you hold that position. Uh, tell us how you weigh the consequences, the benefits and drawbacks of privileging standard English or refusing to privilege standard English. And tell us why you've decided to weigh them in that way. Uh, remember that and or allows you choices. You don't need to explore the consequences of privileging standard English in all three areas, students, schools, culture. Uh, you can choose one or two or three of them, right? Whatever uh, works for you. Uh, remember to use uh, Fish, Young, and Lane to set up the issue. That will both help your reader and it will help you reach your 1,500 words. And remember, this is related, of course, remember to explain everything in a way that someone else outside the class could understand. So when you introduce Fish, right, we're going to want to know uh, who he is, 
what position he has in the argument, why that's important, and so on. Okay. All right. So before we go, I want just to remind you about resources that appear down at the end here. Oops. Sorry. I've got the three readings that we've, well, they're readings, so we've read them, right? The three that we've studied. And then, of course, there are the ways to get help. Uh, these are same as last time, the discussion thread. You can um, ask questions in the questions about the second essay thread that I've put up there. Uh, you can send me messages. You can drop in on student hours. And of course, the writing center uh, is there, same as before. Okay. All right. I think that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. And yeah, I'll see you around.